Andrea Koppel, host of the Time for Coffee podcast, where you get firsthand career advice into the jobs and industries that interest you the most. And before we start today's show, I have a quick favor to ask you. If you haven't already, I'd be incredibly grateful if you give us a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you're like me, you need to do it now because you'll forget later and because it's the best way to help others who may be in search of career advice to find this free resource. So press pause if you haven't done it and do it right now. I'll wait. Thanks so much and enjoy today's show. Hey there, Java junkies. How's it going? If you want to know how to break into the world of marketing, especially digital media. My next guest is a one-stop shop for career counseling in this space. And tip number one is good storytelling is the key to good marketing. So grab your mug and take a chug of a delicious caffeinated beverage because it's time for another caffeinated career conversation. And my guest is Hope Greenberg, the co-founder at Soapbox Strategies, a company she founded in 2014 to help clients develop customized content and strategy designed to generate awareness, loyalty, and strong customer engagement to amplify a brand's singular story. Hope spent the first chapter of her career in the marketing world, working at fashion magazines like Mirabella and Lucky, before eventually moving more into content marketing for other brands like Kate Spade, Kenneth Cole, Joe Fresh, Target, and Banana Republic. Hope, welcome to Time for Coffee. Are you caffeinated and ready to go? I am caffeinated up and ready. Awesome. Okay, let's dive into these espresso shots. What entry-level jobs are available to Java junkies who want to break into the digital marketing space? The easiest entry-level jobs are internships. And these are great. You get an amazing background and you really can look at a breadth of the entire industry. My best recommendation would be if you're still a college student or even just post-college to check your college's website and then make sure that whatever you're interested in is in fact explicitly part of the job. So if you're interested in content creation, make sure that that will be part of your internship. If you're interested more in the strategy analytics side, make sure that you're going to be working with the person who's responsible for that. You're actually making me think of a whole nother question because I think that it's probably not uncommon for young people, let alone old people like me, to kind of miss what all the different moving pieces are in the digital marketing, digital media space. So what are all the different tracks? That is a really good question. So there are different elements of working in digital media. One is actually the content creation. So whether that is content for social media, content for a website, for a blog, advertising, it's really considered more of the creative side. The other side is the strategy and analytics. So Essentially, there's all this content that gets created, but without something to back that up, without reports, without advertising, without an advertising strategy, then that content is just going into a vacuum. Very often, there are different teams that handle each of those segments. There are some people who really have both sides and are interested in both elements, but very often, for example, in my partnership, my partner, Catherine, is the strategy side of our business and I'm the content and creative side of our business. Great. That's so helpful. Thank you, Hope. What is a useful skill or skills that you look for right now at Soapbox or that you've looked for when you've worked at other companies in the entry-level positions that you're hiring? I think almost always, or at least industries that I've been in, what's important to me and what's important to us at Soapbox is a sense of resourcefulness. Somebody who can work with us and figure out 
how to figure it out, which doesn't mean that somebody shouldn't ask questions and absolutely doesn't mean that we don't want to provide answers. But what we want is somebody who, if they hit a roadblock, knows how to keep going and work through it. And if something looks like it's not going to work, then can come to the table with other solutions. We really prize organization. There are a lot of moving parts and being organized is incredibly important, which as crazy as this sounds also includes writing things down. No, Um, you would be amazed. (laughs) (laughs) A <laughs> number of people who we have worked with over the years who do not keep a to-do list. So the first thing that we always talk to our assistants and our interns about anybody who's coming in here at an entry level is please keep a to-do list, write things down. And those are really the baseline things. Beyond that, it's very helpful to have some background in graphic design if in fact you are interested in the creative and content creation side of things. And by the same token, an ability to write if you're interested in the creative side. If you're more interested in the strategy side, then an interest in analyzing data and using data to find business solutions is very helpful. And also an interest in marketing, just generally speaking, or a background if possible. Some marketing classes are always helpful. I noticed that you did not say an ability to navigate social media. Well, that is important. And and I actually was going to get into that a little later. But yes, that is extremely important to really understand what it takes to curate a social media platform. So you can be somebody who loves to use Instagram and who posts a lot and even somebody who has a lot of followers. But what really is ultimately important when you're working with brands is an ability to curate a story and an ability to curate imagery. So yes, absolutely. And we'll talk about this a little more when we talk about what makes it for a good interview. But if your own platforms are well curated, if it shows some kind of red thread, some kind of story. So for example, if you love to cook and you love food, you're a foodie, you love to go out to eat and your Instagram is curated with beautiful food images, that really shows an ability to narrate and curate a story. If you're very interested in beauty, the same thing. If you're interested in art or the art world. So that's incredibly important. At the same time, what's also incredibly important is making sure that your personal social media platforms are only exhibiting the things that you would want a potential employer to see. So I wish that I could go to all kids starting out in high school and say, unless you're planning on wiping your social media platforms clean when you get a job or are looking for a job, think about what you're posting. Because as everyone knows, these things live forever. So probably a litmus test is If you don't want your parents to see it, you don't want your grandparents to see it, then you probably don't want a potential employer to see it. Because you're checking them out. Because absolutely, if you are applying for a job in the digital media, social media space, the first place that that potential employer is going is to your personal social media channels. So let me tee off of that question and ask one of the questions that you wanted me to ask you, which is how can Java junkies shine in an interview in this field? So there are a few things and some of them are general and some of them are very specific. And this is sort of a corollary to writing things down. You would be amazed at the number of people who have come to our office without a hard copy of a resume. So our very first thing is it's great. We love that you emailed us your resume. Please bring a copy. Don't assume that we printed it out. Beyond that, come to us with an iPad or a laptop where you'll be able to share with us some content that you've been creating. And that can potentially be in an internship or a job that you've had before, 
or it can be your own social media platform. It can be a personal blog. If you have videos, show us some videos. If you have some writing samples, show us some writing. Anything that's going to help us understand your sensibility. Because one thing, and of course, we understand that somebody's coming into us, is coming to us at an entry level, and we're not expecting anyone to have a vast amount of experience. But at least in terms of content creation, there is a sensibility that that someone brings to the table. And it's important for us to understand whether a potential candidate's sensibility will jive with the sensibility of our clients. We have a lot of high-end luxury clients in, in the beauty, fashion, and luxury lifestyle categories. So if somebody comes in here and is interested in sports and science, that's probably not going to be the best fit on either side. Mm. Those are such great points, Hope. What does it take to break into digital media, in your opinion? I think it takes a real curiosity and, again, a willingness to be resourceful and a curiosity about the digital space, certainly, pop culture, media of, of all sorts, and the world around you. All of those things come into play, and we have had experiences where we have worked with young people who are very good at at the tasks that are being presented to them. But the ones who really shine are the ones who have that innate interest about everything going on around them. Oh, and one other thing I, I will add to that is in an interview, talk to us, we'll ask you the question. And if we don't, or or somebody, a potential employer doesn't, be ready to talk about the kind of media that you consume. What do you love? What what blogs do you read? What websites do you go to? You know, where what what Instagram accounts do you look at the most? That's that's all very telling and insightful for a potential employer and also a great way to gauge on both sides whether it's going to be a good fit. Yeah. And let me add one other thing. I think this is just it goes without saying. Make sure you've gone on your prospective employer's website. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Right. And that you've actually read about what the company does, who their clients are, maybe read some of the blog postings they've made so that you can come with that sort of foundation into the interview. And oh, by the way, have some questions of your own in your back pocket. Yes, absolutely. Although I never want somebody to feel like they have to manufacture questions. We've interviewed people where we've really covered so much ground, where we've talked so much about our business, where they've talked so much about themselves that at the end of 45 minutes, an hour, or whatever it is, maybe they really don't have a lot of questions. And I'm fine with that if they really think that we've covered it. But, but yes, generally speaking, there should be a thing or two that you're still curious about. Definitely. Thanks for that, Hope. What about someone's major? Is it a deciding factor for you to break into digital media that your prospective candidates have studied marketing, have studied business, have studied fill in the blank? No, not at all. I think it's helpful, but it's not it's not a deciding factor because it's entirely possible that somebody has had a different major, whether they thought maybe they thought that we and we have not personally experienced this. But if somebody came to us and said, hey, I was pre-med, I changed my mind. But you know what? I love digital media. Here are the here are the websites that I look at all the time. This is my personal Instagram. I love storytelling because X, Y and Z. I, I think that's fine, too. But certainly having some background in media or marketing, something that where you may have created some videos, some photography it is entirely helpful, but, but not having it is absolutely not a disqualifier. Good to know. What about a graduate degree? And this is less so for the entry level Java junkies, but more so for those who really want to succeed in the field of digital media. Do they need to have a graduate degree? No. 
And again, I think it can never hurt. My business partner, Catherine, has an MBA in new media and technology from NYU. She was actually the first class, I think, that had to, to be part of that major at NYU. And her MBA serves her very well because she does handle the strategy and analytics side of our business. But And I think it helped her break into this world on the strategy side. But but I don't think it's not like investment banking. You don't have to have an MBA. That is so good to know. And I also love the example, Hope, because what you've showed is that you've partnered with someone who has that. And Java junkies need to be thinking that way, no matter what industry they go into, about how they can complement their strengths with the strengths of others to achieve whatever their goal is. That is important. And that's also really important now when the world is just so much more entrepreneurial in general. And there's a good possibility that if this is a field that you're interested in at some point, you're going to want to start your own agency. You're going to want to break out on your own. So um, absolutely thinking about how to connect with people and network people, network with people who have complementary skills starting very early on. That's a great point, Andrea. That's really, really helpful. Hope, what do you think uh, are the most useful life experiences for someone who wants to start out in the field of digital media? I think internships, as we already talked about, I I think we probably talked about a lot of this, but really it's being somebody, and I'll go back a little bit and say that my career before this was in magazine editorial, fashion magazine editorial. I was somebody who just loved to read magazines. I loved fashion mag. I loved fashion. I loved fashion, anything about fashion, fashion magazines, shopping. <laughs> and so I think that the, the, the corollary to that here is somebody who just really, you know, you're, you're spending some free time really diving into to what's available online. And, and frankly, at this point, I think almost everyone is doing that. But but looking at that and saying, I would like to make a career out of this. So it's like following your interests. And if it this is something, is. right? So it may be like you, that you followed your interests in fashion and in reading magazines about fashion and styling and all of that. And it may be that Java junkies are interested in, as you said before, maybe science or maybe, you know, fill in the blank and finding that part of the digital media space that relates to their interests. Absolutely. And with the understanding and with the caveat that it ultimately is a business. So understanding that just because you spend five hours a day looking at Instagram doesn't mean that you're ultimately going to be interested in all of the parts of the business. Um, so really sort of looking, talking to enough people and understanding what the business side of this looks like to make a decision about, is this a career field for you? Great point. So Hope, <laughs> what is the best part for you of being in this business? So I would say that the best part and the worst part of what I do right now are probably the same thing. And the, I guess, most challenging part is that having my own business means that I can really fall into that black hole of working all the time and not having any boundaries. But that's also the best part because I can work from anywhere and it gives me a lot of flexibility. So, you know, I think it's just being aware and and making sure that I'm really, you know, creating that separate time Um, because having your own business is, in my opinion, one of, you know, one of the greatest things. I absolutely love it. But but you've got to know when to step away. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) We need to have a whole nother conversation (laughs) about that. So, Hope, what is the best career advice you've ever gotten? I would say one of the things I learned along the way, and it's really important, again, right from the very beginning, is to treat everyone you meet, every situation with respect 
and and really thinking through how you're treating people and the impression that you're leaving. I think every industry is small and you just never want to burn bridges. And the thing that that I think starting in any industry might not be apparent right away is that if for whatever reason, a situation doesn't work out, that's fine, but it's how you leave and how you get out of it. That's so important because guaranteed you will cross paths. If you stay in this industry, you will cross paths with that person again. Oh, that's really interesting. So it's a it's a smaller place than you think. <laughs> it is, I, and I think that's probably almost any industry, but particularly if you stay in the same city for a while and are looking for jobs and moving through the industry, you will cross paths with that person or somebody who knows that person at some point. I think that's just great life advice. I think you (laughs) want to treat your colleagues, you want to treat your boss, you want to treat the people that you run into at the supermarket with respect and with dignity and the same way that you want to be treated. I just think that's that's a great way to lead your life. So, yay. (laughs) Hope. What movies, if any, or Netflix, Hulu, Amazon shows or fiction books do you think accurately depict your profession? I was trying to think about this and was was a bit drawing a blank. But but I guess if you go back to the very beginning and, and really think about the history of social media and digital media, the social network, because it, it is a true story. Um, and my understanding of it really, really does accurately depict this world and the, and the startup world. Um, that was the movie about the founding of Facebook. Right. Exactly. Um, nice. Nice. I I really enjoyed the movie. And uh, it's definitely, I think, yeah, it's cutthroat. <laughs> it's cutthroat. And you better be ready to navigate that world. Yeah. and And I think you learn you learn quickly, um, to be savvy, but, but at the same time, and I think this can be applied to almost any industry, any business, it's what we were just talking about, which is it's great. And you always should look out for your own best interest. That's very important. But at the same time, being respectful of how that impacts the people who you're working with and the people around you and your colleagues and your employers. Great. Final espresso shot, Hope. What would Java junkies be surprised to learn about the field of digital media? That probably goes back to the idea that you may love social media and you may have built a great following on Instagram, you're on Snapchat all the time, but this business is about a lot more than posting, than enjoying taking pictures and shooting videos and posting them. There's, there's a lot behind it and a career now that has really taken off. And and probably a lot of Java junkies know about this is the career of social media influencer. And that is somebody who is paid by brands to post on behalf of the brand. That is that is a business. And if you're working with brands, it requires the utmost level of professionalism. You have to be able to negotiate a contract. You have to be able to meet deadlines. You have to be able to understand how to fuse your personal aesthetic or if you've created your own personal brand with that of the brand that's hired you. You have to be willing to reshoot things because the brand may not like what you've shot. All of these things are a business. So as much as you like social media or digital media, it's about a lot more than just loving to be on Instagram. Oh, that is such great insight. Thank you so much, Hope. And I want to thank you so much for making Time for Coffee with me and the Time for Coffee community. This was so interesting. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thanks so much for listening to this latest episode of T for C. 
And if you're interested in learning more about my coaching services for confused college students and recent grads, feel free to check out the Time for Coffee website under the Coaching tab at time, the number 4, coffee.org, or text me at 202-236-5712. That's 202-236-5712. Thank you.